herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Gene Cannabis TV. You made the trip. You got Dank, your host, and my sidekick. We got Reverend Will, uh, my co-host, and I always appreciate Will coming in. And and you people out there could do the same. You could come on and appear on the show. We got some excellent news about the election. There's a lot to talk about. But I've got a letter to the editor that was in the Gene Register Guard here on Monday. Uh, today, it actually was we're filming. And I thought this was so good that I just I had to bring it in. It's not cannabis related but it is related to our main opponents on legalization, <clears throat> the Republicans. It's titled, How the GOP is Like the Taliban. There are similarities between many in the Republican Party and the Taliban. The, the Taliban would like to take us back 1,500 years, the Republicans 50 years, or at least back to when Ronald Reagan was president. Both have archaic ideas about women, preferring to keep them suppressed. Both seem to ignore the wishes of the majority and don't come to terms with the current situation in the country. Both would like to have their religious beliefs incorporated into the law of the land and forced on those of us who don't agree with them. Both, have, have us, uh, both would have us ruled by religious leaders or at least by men who profess deep religious belief. Both don't believe in compromise or the benefit of the majority. Thankfully, in the United States, we still have elections. This is from Frank Keevy of Florence. <laughs> so I thought that was a pretty good analogy myself. So, and on to the election, 2012. This is uh, very historic. Uh, we had three states with the legalization initiatives. Uh, right, and you see the two that had the ability to pull money were the ones who won. Yeah, the two states that got help from national organizations, mainly Marijuana Policy Project, uh, made the ballot. Uh, in fact, the chairman of the MPP uh, uh, was actually uh, in Colorado election night to celebrate. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, they made it and, uh, and making history uh, and uh, Oregon didn't. Uh, Oregon, uh, as of the election night, we were saying that lost by uh, with 45 percent of the vote, that measure 80. Uh, we expect that number to go higher because they're counting votes still, uh, hand counting votes uh, in Multnomah County. Uh, which went 60%, by the way. So we expect that percentage to go uh, to 47, maybe 48% before it's all said and done, which is, uh, uh, yeah, maybe a spin on the whole thing, but the point is, to get that close, we did really well, and that was with no money. Basically, that was with no money, no national help. This was on our own, and doing it on our own, that's a heck of a showing, and it's, people are talking about it. Uh, <clears throat> Hope and, they're talking and, positively. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they are, and uh, uh, there's some act the major activists in the state are in our meeting now about what to do. The legislature's coming up. Uh, they want to uh, start talking to the legislature. We have a couple of legislatures that we can talk to, uh, so they're trying to see what they can do through the legislature. If that fails, we'll go back with an initiative, and we're telling them we'll do it. And they know we'll do it because we've done it several times already. We did it when they tried to recriminalize. Uh, possession of less than an ounce, and that's something they need to keep bringing up to them is that, that they don't know what's always right and they need to be listening to people because they thought it was right to recriminalize uh, back in 97, uh, six, uh, 96, to recriminalize possession of less than an ounce, and we came back with a referendum and beat it and, and uh, uh, killed the idea. So we proved that uh, we do have the, the strength on our side. So anyway, uh, it's an exciting time coming up, and uh, uh, Multnomah County passed, actually passed Measure 80 uh, by 60% is the last figure I got. Uh, Lane County, uh, three counties, uh, see, four counties that passed was Multnomah, uh, Benton, Lincoln, and Lane. Uh, Lane was just, Lane, Lane and Benton were just barely over, uh, made it, but they did, they did win in those states. So yay for Lane County, especially. <laughs> uh, <coughs> And then, uh, and so, and the thing I look at, and maybe again, maybe a spin on this, but I'm thinking, well, one thing about this is that we can let Colorado and Washington do the heavy lifting now. They can take on the feds and see what the feds do, and we can just sit back and watch, and then we do our initiative 
hopefully we can make some changes in our initiative and make it more acceptable and a better chance to have it passed. <clears throat> and plus we can see they're two different systems and so it'll be interesting to see how each of their systems actually goes into law and how it works. So uh, we can benefit from that. <clears throat> but uh, the exciting part that we have a talk we want to talk about is, and this is from StopTheDrugWar.org, excellent organization. I, I recommend the website uh, strongly. Uh, StopTheDrugWar.org, easy to remember. Uh, their article here, this is written by <clears throat> Philip Smith. More drug-related election results, the good and bad. <clears throat> the California three strikes uh, re re uh, sentencing reform passes. Uh, that makes it, uh, the way it was is that uh, third conviction for drug possession, theft of a pizza, minor stuff could get you, the, could get the uh, third strike, uh, third strike in, in life. Uh, so now <clears throat> it has to be uh, uh, violence and uh, anyway, more serious offenses. Uh, medical marijuana, we had two statewide, two statewide initiatives that lost. Uh, Arkansas, issue five, they lost uh, 48 and a half to 51.5. And by the way, that's again, that 48.5, that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of, uh, that's close. Uh, Montana, they had a, uh, hoping to overturn the conservative legislature's getting of the state's medical marijuana law with initiative referendum 124. Uh, but that we wanted that to pass, uh, but no, we wanted it to fail. Yes, was to, to reaffirm the changes the legislature made. It's one of those confusing things where you want you don't want it, so you got to vote no. But anyway, uh, it lost uh, to 56.5 to 43.5. So uh, that's kind of indicative of Montana, and I believe in the conservative uh, conservativeness of the state. I, I believe. But anyway. So uh, I'm big, jumping on Detroit here. Yes, this is the next. This is really exciting. Detroit legalizes another Michigan and uh, local initiatives win. Michigan local initiatives ran the full spectrum of marijuana reform issues with limited legalization on the ballot in Detroit and Flint, decriminalization on the ballot in Grand Rapids, making marijuana the lowest law enforcement priority on the ballot in, oh, how do you pronounce that? Why? Uh, Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti. And medical marijuana dispensary regulation on the ballot in Kalamazoo. They all won. That's excellent. Detroit's Measure M, which legalizes the possession of up to an ounce on private property, won with 65% of the vote with 100% of precinct reporting, while the Flint measure was winning with 60% of the vote. Decriminalization in Grand Rapids also pulled 60%, while Kalamazoo embraced up to three dispensaries by a ratio of two to one, and yip. yip Thank you. <laughs> Lowest priority initiative won with a whopping 74%. <laughs> So Amazing. yay for Michigan. Uh, <clears throat> Urban Wells from Michigan. I, I, I sure am. So that's a, a especially good news. Howdy, huh? boys, girls. Yeah. Good job. Great news. Great news. Good job. Yes. Uh, Massachusetts becomes the 18th medical marijuana state. For more than a decade, Massachusetts activists have used the tactic of, tactic of the uh, non-binding public policy question in legislative districts to demonstrate support for your marijuana law reform. The questions have ranged from medical marijuana to decriminalization to legalization, and none have ever lost. This year, in districts representing one-fifth of the electorate, all of the questions were about legalization, and again, they all won. So, uh, not only that, but and then they got the medical in too, so, uh, and medical, now there's 18 states that have medical marijuana now. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> there was a guy who used to make, I don't remember who he, who he was, but there was a guy who used to have a hemp t-shirt here at Saturday Market with the map of the United States. Do you remember those? And he had medical marijuana symbols in each state that had medical marijuana. And then down below is the continental United States it wrote, it said, <coughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> so anyway, we're up to 18. So, and then California, uh, San Diego County blocks, or San Diego County towns block dispensary regulation. Uh, let's see, according to semi-official San Diego results, uh, grassroots initiatives to permit and regulate medical marijuana dispensaries were voted down. Opponents won with 56%. Uh, they had a lot of trouble in San Diego. The county tried to outlaw dispensaries and ban them, and they were they got beat back on that. And so, <coughs> excuse me, it's a constant battle in San Diego, but they're winning. They're they're winning, so they're getting there. 
Uh, let's see, in Colorado, uh, let's see, Larry Murr, Larry Murr, Larry, hey, hey. Larry Murr. Larry, there's no A on the end, but it's Larry, Larry Murr. Right. Anyway, county uh, dispensary battles. Last year, Fort Collins residents voted to ban medical marijuana dispensaries, prompting advocates to put the issue back on the ballot this year. And according to uh, official results, dispensaries will be back, winning 55 to 45. <laughs> uh, that's excellent. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, it, it's just uh, the walls are crumbling. Uh, the, the wall, the, uh, the Berlin Wall, so to speak, is coming down. <laughs> well, time. The cat's out of the bag, yeah. So, anyway, it goes on to talk about Colorado, and uh, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's excellent. And uh, uh, we had an a article by Jack Moran of uh, the Registered Guard. Uh, he's written several articles on cannabis issues and always written uh, quite fairly. And he quotes uh, Paul Stanford here saying, We're disappointed, of course, but we've shown that we have a large segment of the population that believes marijuana should be legal and treated like a legitimate market in Oregon, said Portland uh, resident Paul Sanford, the, chief, the measure's chief backer. Updated numbers released Wednesday afternoon by state elections officials showed that 45.55% showed that of state voters supported Measure 80. And like I said, that's, I believe that's up to about 47 now and could a little higher before, it's all counted, before they're all counted. A slim majority of Lane County voters, 50.6%, supported the legalization plan, which also won in Multnomah, Benton, and Lincoln counties. Legalization measures in Washington, Colorado, earned support from broad swaths of the, swaths of the electorate on Tuesday. So we already spoke, spoke about that. Sam Chapman, a uh, <coughs> local U of O graduate and SSDP member, uh, with another gentleman, formed a uh, co-op, I mean a... Uh, uh, PAC, Political Action uh, Committee, Oregon's for law and for, to reform to gather money for Measure 80. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, they, they're saying that uh, his, him and his partner's effort uh, forming this PAC and trying to come up with money they did gained 4 to 5 percent of the, of the votes that were responsible for 4 to 5 That's percent awesome. of the votes. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. They did a lot of, a lot of, they did a lot of, uh, <coughs> Accomplished a lot for a short, little, small amount of money, I'm trying to say. So, anyway, that was Sam Chapman and, and a friend of ours, who uh, well known. And uh, he was saying that the dominoes are starting to fall, and the fact that Washington and Colorado passed it gives a chance to earn from their mistakes. So, we've got to wrap it up. We'll be talking about some more of this in the next section. And, uh... Every morning, 80 year old Moshe Roth gets his medicine, stuffs it in his pipe, and smokes it. Moshe is using medical marijuana, also known as cannabis. How did the cannabis make you feel? <sighs> Good. He is a Holocaust survivor, an author and painter whose hands started shaking so much he couldn't work anymore. <laughs> My hands are now steady. I can hold uh, things like tea, he says. The cannabis also makes him high because of the psychoactive effects of the substance THC in the plant. For those who use medical marijuana, the high they experience is the price for the reported help it gives to cancer patients on chemotherapy or others suffering from everything from Parkinson's disease to pain. Rivka Holop thought marijuana just got people high until she was prescribed a new strain of the plant and tried it, two spoonfuls a day with her other medications. She says the pain that left her wheelchair bound began to be relieved without leaving her lethargic. Outstanding. I was turned into a different person. I was resurrected. I was awakened to life, she says, because the new cannabis helped her get back on her feet again. Takuna Lam, a company in Israel that grows and distributes medical marijuana, says the new strain it has developed has almost no THC, virtually eliminating the high. The plant produces a high concentration of another substance called CBD. At a press tour to publicize their new product, we met Professor Ruth Galili. She's been studying the effects of CBD for more than a decade and is now being paid by the company to continue her research. So we are really dealing with non-toxic material, very active as anti-inflammatory and anti-pain and not expensive to grow. 
Growers here say this is the most potent type of medical marijuana or cannabis in its, in its traditional form. But just next to it is the wave of the future. We're talking about putting cannabis in capsules and also having it put into chewing gum so that even children can take it. Cannabis is being prescribed in Israel and used by children who have been licensed. Medical marijuana has been legal in Israel for more than a decade. It is strictly controlled. A doctor has to prescribe it, and each patient must have an individual license to use it. We can't be all the time narrow-minded. We have to think about people who are suffering, and we have to think how we help them without, God forbid, allowing more use of drugs among those who don't need them. But critics say there's simply not enough research on marijuana of any kind for medical purposes. They say that unlike other drugs, the results of testing, including dosing and negative side effects, are not yet clear. But growers here hope their new version can be exported around the world one day. But 80-year-old Moshe Roth says he'll stay with the good old-fashioned medical marijuana. Sarah Seidner, CNN, in northern Israel. Welcome back. And we got Reverend Will and Dank here, and we were talking about news of the election and, and uh, things related to cannabis and prohibition and the ending thereof. Uh, it's a freedom issue, I've always said. It's just right down to a freedom issue. As our friend Bobby Six Crows likes to say, if we're going to make some plant illegal, let's make, uh, let's make poison oak illegal. You know, eradicate poison oak, keep it off your property, have jail time if you get caught with it on your, you know, so... Anyway, it'd make a lot more sense. <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about this article from the Red Cigar, written by Jack Moran. Uh, Jack's written some uh, very fair articles. He covered our hemp fest problems we had in 2004 when the city wouldn't let us have a park. And uh, it's an uh, excellent reporting. Anyway, he was talking about, uh, <clears throat> we were talking about Sam Chapman and uh, <clears throat> how he formed a PAC and collected money for the uh, proposal. <clears throat> You're saying that the next legalization proposal in Oregon, Oregon will most likely resemble the plans that gained voter approval on Tuesday. We would definitely establish limits if we have to go back to the ballot initiative process. Uh, Stanford said that, he, that his plan would have generated tens of millions of dollars in new revenue for the state and allow police to focus on more serious crimes. Much of the revenue would have gone into the state's general fund to help pay for a range of state programs. And I know, <clears throat> Will, you've talked for years about having a cannabis-based uh, economy. Economy, yeah. So yeah. it's the money's there. You know, I haven't looked for. I keep forgetting to check it out. But there used to be a website called TaxMePlease.com, mm -hmm. and that was the whole point. Yeah, make it legal and tax me. I don't love to pay taxes on it. Just let me use it and leave me alone. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what Paul says about the fact that we might be taking a back seat in this industry. It could really be a setback for Oregon's economic growth. What he's talking about there is that if we had acted upon this this time, that we would maybe in the forefront of this, now we're just going to be in the mainstream of it when it starts happening because we're not in the forefront. So for all those people, I just want to thank all the people who didn't vote. And I'm not being sarcastic. I mean, for me, we have to see the power that we have as a voting block. And the only way we can see that is when we see people who are able to block us by minimally not voting. I mean, we only lost by 5%, maybe, maybe as little as 2%. So that means for all of you who have people who are in jail who may have been released, as the program was talking about in Washington, wasn't it Washington? Yeah, that, that yes, I forgot to bring that, that story in, but yes, in Washington, King County just announced uh, that they're dropping 175 uh, prosecution, uh, 175 cases of involving marijuana. I'm trying to say. So. Right. So for all of those yeah. you who have family members and stuff who are now incarcerated and will remain incarcerated because we didn't make it legal in this state, you can thank those people who are your neighbors and your friends and family who decided that it was more worthwhile for them to have their own personal industry than it was for us to be able to utilize it in a way where we could take care of the problems of the many instead of the few, which is one of the things that we do when we point fingers at the government, the federal government in particular, and say they're not paying attention to us. It's exactly the same thing. When you have the power to make a difference and you don't implement it, 
you don't use it for your own selfish reasons. Makes yeah, sure. Sad. It just makes me sad, you know, because we're we're doing what others have been doing for years instead of setting a better example. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, definitely. Yep, it's uh, yeah, free market. You know, I, I've said it for years. You know, I, I believe in the free market, so let it go. The reason they talk about all. Oh, uh, 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 crime is drug related people stealing money uh, stealing items so they can get their drugs well the reason that they're doing that is because prohibition has driven the price of drugs up to an unrealistic high for instance heroin I don't advocate anybody being on heroin but I, from what I read people can maintain heroin and, and function normally uh, it's, it's, the, it's the cost of keeping in the illegal drug heroin, heroin and supply is the problem. So, but anyway, uh, it's off the, uh, there. Uh, Brian Michaels also comments, a local attorney with extensive uh, experience in the uh, cannabis uh, marijuana issues, uh, he supported uh, Measure 80 and he said it was poorly understood by voters. Uh, says, well, Stanford said that it's primary, that was, that that's primarily due to a lack of big money donors who contributed heavily to campaigns in both Colorado and Washington, and, which is true. Uh, Michael said it's also because Oregon's measure wasn't written in a voter-friendly way. In addition to allowing adults to grow an unlimited amount of pot for personal use, the measure's text covered several arguments that marijuana enthusiasts have for decades used when asked to defend their favorite plant including that George Washington grew cannabis for more than 30 years, that moderate use of the drug causes very little impairment, and that laws banning its use violate a person's religious rights. Michael said he expects legislatures will be open-minded if they move ahead with a serious discussion regarding the pros and cons of legalizing marijuana. 55% of approval isn't that bad, Michael said. We could have certainly liked to have been there with Washington and Colorado, but any legalization is a move forward in this country. So uh, there you have it from Michael, uh, Brian Michaels. And a lot of celebration going on and speculation on what's going to happen next. Uh, and uh, it says, uh, oh yeah, the Justice, let's see, uh, Cal- let's see, the Justice Department said it's evaluating the measures. When California was considering legalization in 2010, Attorney Eric Holder said he would be a significant impediment to joint federal and local efforts to combat drug traffickers. Federal agents have cracked down on medical pot dispensaries in states where it is legal, including California and Washington. Individual pot users may not be immediately affected as authorities have long focused on dismantling trafficking organizations, operations. So, He's like, uh, yeah, the Drug Enforcement Administration, he's saying, I can't see that the Justice Department doing anything other than enforce the law. There's no other, there's no other out. So it'll be interesting uh, with Obama being a, a lame duck president, uh, there's some speculation that now he'll step up to the plate on, on marijuana and at least get the government to back off on dispensaries or uh, as he said he would last time and then didn't do any of it. Uh, you know, because remember that, it's, he became president. Well, first he was campaigning, he said we shouldn't spend any funds on <coughs> persecuting people using medical, uh, marijuana medically. And then, uh, uh, I, it, I need to write that whole scenario thing down where the holder come out and backed it up and said, yeah, we're not going to go after anybody that's uh, in compliance of their, of their state medical marijuana laws. And then they turn around and start busting people all over California that were uh, in compliance, is my understanding. So, I don't know. It's it's just a well. Once again, to me, see, Eric Holder and the attorney generals are the ones who hold the key because the attorney generals are the ones who should all be getting together, especially in the 18 states that have a medical, and now the two states that have a legal, and just saying to the federal government, you have no business involving yourselves in our business regarding medical until it starts leaving our borders. Okay, because that's when the interstate transportation starts occurring. Mm-hmm. And that's where the government, the federal government, is supposed to be keeping their watchdog on. Mm-hmm. So the whole thing is if the attorney generals got together and did the same thing they did with cigarettes and, and said, this is what we want. It's not necessarily that we want money like they wanted at that point in time, 
but what we want is our rights back. I mean, we're tired of being discriminated against, and now we're put in a backseat position of being in the forefront of all these things, the industries that we've been talking about for years. Trying, I mean, we've had industrial. We've had industrial legal, and yet still, because of the pressure, just the peer pressure, the bullyism of the federal government, and putting out such pressure that you're not going to get money for your roads and you're not going to get money for your federal timber uh, if you do not enforce marijuana prohibition the way we want it done. Now, that's straight up blackmail. And yet, you know, you can't use that term because you can't sue the federal government and you can't hold the president accountable for making that decision or the state legislature or, the, I mean, the federal legislature. Although, I wouldn't mind locking them up all of them, you know, personally. I mean, seriously, they declared war on us. They gave us no Geneva Convention privileges. They now have it so they're allowing us, they're tolerating us to a point as long as we don't say that it's being prescribed, as long as we don't do it in public, as long as we don't do it at work, as long as we don't do it when we're driving. But we're not discriminated against. And where's the ACLU in all this? Who knows? Sleeping, I guess. Yeah, you bet. Okay, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. I wanted to talk a little real quickly about the Emerald and Fire Hemp Fest. We're coming up. Now, this is coming July 2013. We're planning now. Uh, that's why I wore our special 2004 shirt. This has what was original, our logo, our original logo on it. I won't even mention the guy. I can't remember what his name was, but I would, if I knew it, I wouldn't mention it anyway because he let us use this for a year and then got mad at us and then wouldn't let us use it again so we had to come up with a new logo so well, this is not our logo but everybody loves this uh, <clears throat> artwork and it's but anyway uh 2003 it's gonna be the third weekend in july uh it's gonna be bigger than ever and better than ever uh that's the weekend after the country fair anytime you hear about anybody talking about the country fair just remember oh yeah the hemp fest is gonna be a week after that so uh, and that's where the, you know, if you want to go to the country fair, that's where the cannabis, uh, marijuana, hip, uh, 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 hypocrites are. If you want the facts and, and uh, positive stuff on cannabis and hemp, come to the Emerald Empire Hemp Fest. We'll show you things that the Oregon Country Fair is afraid to let you see. So, <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate you having us in. And Reverend Will is here, being here again. And uh, go to Will's website, the church. Church of the Caring. Church of the Caring dot org. 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 We're out of here. We'll see you next week.